Okay, so we can start the tour. I'm Giulia. I'll be your guide. This way, please. So welcome at Marchesi di Barolo Winery. The first thing that impresses us are these huge barrels in Slavonian oak. These were made in the 1960s by the master cooper Severino Comola in Milan. These barrels were then reassembled here in the winery because of their size. So as you can see, each of these barrels has got a little blackboard on it, which is like a passport for these barrels. So we have the number of the barrel, the hectoliter is inside 185. It means that one of these barrels can produce around 25,000 bottles. Oh, Enough for a good party, no? <laughs> <laughs> then the wine inside, a Barolo 2015 Atoa, it means that this wine can be called Barolo at the moment. It is up to become a Barolo at the end of the aging. And for this wine is 38 months, so two years in wood and one year in bottle. We can then sell Barolo wine from the fourth year from the vintage, so from the year you see on the label. And then the date of the last raking, so the last time we moved the wine from the tanks in concrete behind you to the wood. In this case on the 22nd of March 2017. So we want to move the wine during the aging process because we want to clean these big barrels, in this case, no? So the cleaning happens once a year and is with water and soda and then every 10 years some coopers come here in the winery, they enter through this little door here, first with the head, then one shoulder, then the other, and they manually clean the barrel inside. This cleaning sounds incredible, no? <laughs> but uh, it has to be done because we want to um, clean the pores of the wood from the tartrates, the sediments of the wine, so that the wine can be oxygenated again. That's why. So as you can see behind, uh, underneath the barrels, we have these uh, little stones, no? These are volcanic stones. So we wash them once a week with water and then they release humidity. So they're like a sponge. They help us to keep uh, the humidity in the cellar very high, around 85%. That's because wood is an alive material, no? So we want to keep it flexible and humid all the time. Otherwise, if it dries, it tends to absorb a lot of wine. We don't want it to happen. We have a very strict laws on producing Barolo and Barbaresco wines. So for Barolo, we have the aging process, which is 38 months. It has to be two years in wood, and if it's the classic way of aging, is Slavonian oak. Otherwise, you can also use French oak, so the barriques. For example, for the crew, the single vineyards, we also use the barriques for one third, and then for two third, we use these big Slavonian oak barrels. So you have this good blend no, between the boise note and the spices of the barriques. So the barriques are made in French oak and they are 225 liters in capacity. So babies in confront to these very big barrels. These tanks here are in concrete as the first ones we saw over there, but these are a bit more special. Their peculiarity is that they have a second wall inside in cork. So cork is a natural isolator, so it helps us to isolate the temperature of the wine inside the tank from the one of the winery. In fact, in here starts the second fermentation of the wine, the malolactic one, when the malic acids transform into lactic acids, when we have a more soft, elegant wine. During this fermentation, the wine reaches 25 to 30 degrees. That's why it's so important to isolate the temperature. Otherwise, the fermentation would stop and we would lose all the features of the wine, as the tannins and etc. In this area, we only do the second fermentation for the red wines, because for the whites, we want to preserve the acidity, so the freshness of the wine. You can see it from the label, so in this tank, there is a Barbaresco um, Tradizione, I imagine, 2017. So, the newest vintage. Uh, over there, Barbaresco 2015, and others. Barolo 2017. Yeah. 
you will find always red wines in here. 700,000 bottles per year is our total production. We have 200 hectares of land, 100 is of property, and they're always the, um, the crews, the single vineyards, and the other 100 we buy the grapes from certified producers. That's why we can have um, a great range of different wines. So this is the heart of the winery, the central part, uh, where we have these steel tanks. These are refrigerated. Inside we usually store Moscato dusty wine. This fizzy sweet wine, perfect for dessert. It is a very fruity wine, but it tends to lose its scents with time. That's why we want to preserve it at a temperature around zero to below one, because we don't want the fermentation to start. Otherwise, we will lose all the scents of the wine. Then when the market demands our Moscato, we just erase the temperature, so we allow the fermentation to make it sparkling, and then we can bottle. So we can say that Moscato Dusty is the wine on demand. We want to bottle it just in time now for Christmas time and Easter time so we can preserve all the, um, the freshness, the aromas of the wine. On this side we have steel tanks as well but these are not refrigerated. Inside we usually store red wines as you can see, so Barbera, Barolo, Nebbiolo and others. These wines are already aged in wood so they're ready to be bottled. We want to store them here because the bottling establishment is not in this winery, it's one kilometer down the hill, still in Barolo village, and to transport the wine we made an underground pipeline in alimentary plastic that just works with gravity because we are a bit more up in the village. We have Dolcetto which is a very young wine uh, and yes, that one is not aged in wood. Dolcetto is from, from here, from the area. We have a Dolcetto which is a single vineyard, a crew, Bosset and is produced here in Barolo village, on a hill here. And then we have another dolcetto, dolcetto d'Alba, which is from the area around uh, Alba city. These barrels here on my right are the newest we have in the winery. They just arrived five months ago. So as you can see, the wood is the same as Lavonian oak, but the master coopers are Austrian this time. And it's written over there. One of these barrels can cost around 25,000 euros when it's new. But I think it's a good investment because then these barrels have a very long life. Yes. These are 60 hectoliters, yes. So that little bottle uh, helps us to refill the big barrel because with time the wood tends to absorb wine, as I was telling you before, a part evaporates and that's the angel's share. So uh, we don't want the oxygen to come straight in contact with wine, that's why we use that little bottle. So we are in the oldest part of the winery and it's actually the part we are most proud of. Here we have these five barrels that are the barrels of the Marquise. They are 200 years old. As you can see, we still produce wine inside. At the moment there is a Barolo 2016. So we use these barrels to produce Barolo, the classic one, Barolo Tradizione and Barolo Reserve. The winery is about 200 years old as well. So we say that Barolo wine was born from a love story. The one between a noble French lady, Juliette Colbert, and a noble here of the town, Tancredi Falletti. The two met in France, they married, and then they moved to Turin, to Palazzo Barolo. This was a summer house of the couple, very lucky. <laughs> so then when Juliette discovered this winery and tasted the wines, she also discovered the great potential of Nebbiolo wine. 
Of course, she was French, so she had a great knowledge in wine aging as well. So thanks to the help of a French enologist, Houdard, they discovered this new wine. They called it Barolo, thanks to the village, and to differentiate it from the other Nebbiolo wine that was already produced here in the area. Then in 1865, the Marquise died. They didn't have children, so the normal family extinguished, and they decided to devolve all the richness to this Opera Pia Barolo, a charity foundation that the Marquise created. In fact, she was a very clever lady and very active in the social. Opera Pia Barolo kept producing wine for a while, and in 1929, they sold everything again. A person here of Barolo, the Sir Pietro Emilio Abbona, that was already very rich and famous for his wine production, he knew of the selling, he went to Turin and he bought everything again. So we say that from that year, from 1929, Abbona family is producing wines here in this winery. At the moment, they are the sixth generation, and the children, Valentina and Davide, are very active and interested to continue. As you can see, these very old barrels were made in a different way as the ones of today. So the front and the back were flat, and then they were adding these bars to connect the two parts. So these bars are going all the way through the barrel. So once these uh, bars were in steel, and then when we restored these barrels, we, we changed them with stainless steel bars. Instead, nowadays, we have these concave barrels, as you can see, where the pressure of the wine is spread up and down, so it's easier to contain it. Now I'd like to show you some pictures of the cleaning works we did at these very old barrels, just over there on the book. So this is before and after the cleaning from the outside of the barrels. So it took them four months to clean them, actually. Now I show you the inside. So these were the tartrates, the sediments of the wine, that were there for 200 years. In fact, these barrels have never been cleaned before because they didn't think it was essential. And they were used to the taste anyway, so they couldn't know how was the difference. So thanks to this cleaning, we gained five hectoliters in capacity each barrel, so 500 liters. And nowadays, these barrels are listed UNESCO Heritage. So they are very special barrels. You see the thick layer that was inside? the thick layer of sediments. This container here is called Gerla and was used in the past as a backpack to contain the grapes during the harvest. Very heavy backpack though. <laughs> Around 50 kilos full. On this Gerla we have the two crops of the families, so the Falletti family and Juliette Colbert family. This is right, Grapes Vita Vita from Vines Life. This was the motto of the family.
In front of us there is Barolo Castle and today is the Wine Museum. And the plaza you see in front of us is called Piazza Colbert and is where they put the main stage of Collisioni Festival. It is every year in July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very nice. We have a lot of uh, VIP coming no, for yeah. this event. Uh, so the castle was owned by the, Marqui the Marchese, Marquise, okay. um, and then they, they sold it to the village. And okay. nowadays it's the wine museum. Uh, so 2017 vintage was a very tough one yeah. because we had the, um, these freezing nights at the beginning of the season, then the hail storms and then this very dry climate, warm and dry. So yeah, we have a, a, a tough vintage. Uh, we have a less production of course, but very high quality product. Now we can go upstairs again. So the visit is finished, thank you for your attention and your interest, <laughs> it was a pleasure.